to take you deeper than the challenges that are in your life so you understand exactly why Jesus is in you and why you are in Christ. Welcome to a dynamic and life transforming program impacting generations with the word of God. Christ has been made our wisdom. He's Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. He's not just the power without the wisdom and it cannot be complete to be wisdom without the power because the wisdom of God evokes the power of God on your life. Here is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubeck. I started a series uh, last, uh, this Thursday, last Thursday, and uh, our teaching was from Colossians chapter 1 from the 9th verse to the 11th verse. And I promised that some of the things that I was going to share, the time would not suffice for me to finish and give justice to the things that had to be shared. It had two parts, and these two parts had their own distinctive course of revelation they could not be joined in the same someone but in their uniqueness of this story the completion of this verse this um, revelation can only come as I teach the other part of this equation and so I promised that I was going to continue from that last week I I mean on Thursday I touched the, the, the issue or the secret of fruitfulness and um, so today I'm going to touch something else again that has its own uniqueness in nature and, 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 and pattern, but is key for the New Testament dispensation for us to understand. So we read from Colossians chapter 1 verses 9, Paul says, For this cause also, since we, uh, we, the day we heard it, what was that? The love that the people in Colossae had in the spirit, uh, the Bible says, we do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. The knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That she might walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, comma, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Verses 11, that's where I want to make my emphasis on. Uh, strengthened with all might strengthened with all might according to his glorious power and to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness and to all patience with long suffering and joyfulness strengthened with all might today I want to talk about divine strength I want to explain what it means to be strengthened of God because as the will of God is revealed to you in all knowledge, in all wisdom and understanding. The Bible says that you will walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing. And as you are pleasing, you become fruitful. You have to be fruitful. Your fruitfulness is as a result of that walking worthy of the Lord as a person who has understood the will of God in all wisdom and understanding. You're increasing uh, in the knowledge of God. But also, I want to talk about the strength of God, the strength of the Spirit, the might of the Spirit, the strengthening that comes from God. All right? Because this is part of the completion of this equation, the completion of this puzzle. We must understand how the strength of, of, of God, or how the strength of the Spirit is, of how the might of the Spirit is. It's important. For us to be strengthened with might for us to be strong in the spirit some believers are not strong spirited they are not mighty spirited they don't have a might they don't have a strength in the spirit realm in their spirits their spirits are timid their spirits are weak and that is why many of you struggle some of you struggle with fear some of you struggle with uh, being unstable some of you struggle with being inconsistent in the things of the spirit. Some of you struggle with medi mediocrity in the spirit. Some of you struggle with predictability. You're very predictable. Your way of life is very predictable. Some of you, you can only fight to the things that can easily uh, be attacked or attended to. But when harder things come, when more complicated things come, you, you, you faint, you die, you pass out, you, 
you draw back, you give up, you give in, you sink because your spirit is not strengthened with might. You, you, you don't walk and move in the strength of the spirit of God. And tonight I want to provoke you to understand what it is to be mighty, to be strong in your spirit, to be steady and studied for God. I want to show you what it means to fortify yourself, to be a strong man, to be a strong woman, to withstand storms, to withstand winds, to withstand attacks, to withstand testations and temptations, and still come out victorious and stronger than you came in, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 19, the Bible says, the Lord is my strength. It comes from understanding that when you receive God, when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, He is the pivot, the foundation, the source of that strength, the source of that might in the Spirit. God is the source of that. So when Habakkuk says that the Lord is my strength, he says, and He will make my feet like hinds feet, and He will make me to walk upon high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. He's speaking of the God who is his strength. The Bible says in Psalms that they shall go in the strength of the Lord. There's something about being strengthened by God. There's something about moving in the strength of God, in the might of the Spirit. There's something about being a strengthened one, a mighty one. And as I continue to share, you'll understand why. Because all the things that we see physically, the Bible says we're not made by things which do appear. So even what will come out for strength spiritual, I mean physical, began from a spiritual building, a spiritual trans, uh, transformation, a spiritual establishment, a, a spiritual vision, a spiritual way and understanding of life. So if your heart, if your spirit is not strengthened if you don't carry a certain might okay you cannot even live long one point when god is tired of striving with man he says i shall not strive with man anymore okay and 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 he shortens the days and then we see later how he speaks of how the days of men in flesh shall be 70 but by reason of strength more okay so when he says by reason of strength more what does it mean so it I mean that you are all men are ordained to die at 70 or that 70 is the age to die and you know the rest should go further. No, when we become new in Christ, when we become born again, we live longer, we see longer, we plan to live longer on the earth. We are not subject to the 70 years. But he has spoken that even if a man should go further than that, it's their strength, right? It's the strength of the spirit, the reason of strength that takes men far. You're not going to live long because you eat so good, although I'm not against eating good. Eating good is okay. But you're not going to live long because you eat so good. You're not going to live long because you are rich and you have access to all the medication in the world or the, all the hospitals in the world. Some of the richest people we know have died and there's nothing their money would do but you will live long by reason of strength and that strength does not begin from the physical manifestation of your life it does not begin from what is working and what's not working in your body there are people who were healthy from head to toe and have died in this season of any other deaths okay but consequently god will drive your body to a robustness of health because of the strength that you carry within and because of that you will live a full life the bible says that you shall serve the Lord your God. And the Bible says, And he shall bless your bread and water. And he shall take sickness from the midst of thee. But he also promises, 
that the days of your life shall he fulfill he, he intends to give you a full life the number of your life of the days of your life the bible says he shall fulfill he will bring to fruition you will go to your grave old but that can only be by the reason of the strength the might of the spirit some people have good genes but good genes are not enough to give you a full life at least human humanity and human life as we know it has taught us that yes for some they can say oh it's the genes but there are people of the same genes who have died there are people of the same family who have also suffered disease and died so it's more than than the genes the people who look healthy and strong by all standard but they are not strong within their soul and they will die early the story is given of joshua as he leads the children of israel after the demise of the man of god moses and he testifies of his life in joshua 14 verses 10 he says and now behold the lord has kept me alive as he has said these four 40 and five years even since the lord spake this word unto moses while the children of israel wandered in the wilderness and now lo i am this day four score and five years what is four score and five years 85 years he says i'm this age this day four score and five years yet i am as strong this day as i was in the day that moses sent me as my strength was then even so is my strength now for war both to go out and to come out to come in joshua is strong enough to even go to war at 85 because he feels that he is strong in himself as he was when he was 40 as he was when he was 30 that is what they call the strength of god and so he says right now my strength is now for war both to go out and to come in i can fight i can go to war and go on the front line and kill a 30 or 40 year old with my own strength and skill now that is health that is life today people are 50 and everything is dead in their body people are 60 and everything is dead in their body people are 70 and and they they, they, they are gone they can't even run they they can't they can't ride a bicycle and that is why i decree upon your life for everybody that is under the sound of this voice right now that tonight god is fixing aligning placing positioning something in your spirit as this word goes out that gives you a strength that even at 90 you will do things men at 30 and 40 do in the mighty name of jesus receive it and say amen that is the strength of the spirit but you see it transcends the strength of the flesh the body and it goes into the strength of our spirits it is with that strength that we progress in life it is that with that strength that we overcome the tests of our time it is with our strength that we create things out of nothingness because we carry the word and the revelation of the spirit that defines our future it is with that strength that we uphold our relationships it is with that strength that we build our ministries it is with that strength that we raise our people it is with that strength that we build our careers it is with that strength that we believe to go beyond and, and 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 prosper in everything that we aspire to do it is the strength of the lord it's that thing in us that never gives up and gives in and caves in and 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 draws back it is that thing that is always continuously pressing on certain that you will always break through when you carry that strength it doesn't matter how bad news come it doesn't matter how big the challenges that come in your way are it doesn't matter how testing the circumstances that surround you are it doesn't matter what report 
you have received from the doctors. It doesn't matter what reports you've received from the law. It doesn't uh, matter what reports you've received from the institutions that you're in. It doesn't matter what reports you've received in your relationships. You still carry on. You still persevere. You still press on. You still fight through and believe God for a brighter day, a better day. And suddenly, something always comes up. And people look through your life and can testify that she overcame it. He defeated it. That can only come by the strength of God. It can only come by the strength of the Spirit. So there are five things that for me help in the demystification of this mystery. Because somebody will say, then how do I move or how do I walk in the strength of God? How do I move in the strength of the Spirit? How do I... Uh, progress how do i continue in the strength and the might of the spirit how do i build this thing that you're talking about the five precepts that are written of in scripture number one you never underestimate the power of the wisdom of the spirit divine wisdom is something that you cannot do without if you must build a certain tenacity, a certain might, a certain strength in God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 24, verses 5, he says that a wise man is strong. A wise man is strong. And a man of knowledge increaseth strength. A man of knowledge increases strength. When you invest your time in reading the word, in understanding the mysteries of the spirit, in understanding how God works, in studying the patterns of the spirit, the Bible says you are increasing in strength every other day. Now, you imagine a space where people go to services, go to church, and men of God pray for them, prophesy in their lives, and do all these kinds of things. But they don't give them the opportunity to give them the wisdom of the Spirit. To instruct them in the way of knowledge and understanding. Such people are weak and fickle. They are, they are beggarly. They are without any strength within them. All they need, they need to be around the apostle. Or if they don't have the apostle, they are going to die. Oh, if they don't hear the phone of the prophet, something is going to happen. If they don't hear the, 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 the word of their man of God at that hour concerning that issue, if he does not pray for them in this season, they are gone. Because they rely all their lives on the strength and ability and anointing of other, of other people. They exist by the incense of other men. So as other men and other priests or kings are burning incense, they want to smell that fragrance and live by it. It's the life by which they breathe. But the time has come where the church of Jesus Christ should appreciate that we can no longer preach a Christianity without the depth of the revelation of Christ. Because you see, what knowledge gives, what wisdom gives is light. And people have not yet understood the difference between light and darkness. Sickness is darkness. Poverty is darkness. Bondage is darkness. And all these other things. I pray I, I get time to speak uh, about it and how light moves. Because some people see light or if you switch on say physical light. You know, and which is sort of a, a picture of the spiritual light. But not the full uh, picture of that. Some people don't understand that light moves at a certain speed. And so what for you is present before your eyes as light? There's a speed that moves it. In, in the milliseconds, in the microseconds, in, in the picoseconds, to you. And, and what you see is light. But some people don't appreciate the process of how this light moves. And the transfer of that light in the spaces that are dark. So when we're talking about divine health, for example, he sends his word and heals all their diseases and delivers them from all their destructions. The, the, the word of God comes as a light. It is that light that shines in darkness 
and darkness cannot comprehend it. If you don't understand how to deal with the wisdom of the spirit, not only touching your health, but every other aspect of your life, if you cannot invest in the wisdom of God, you will not move in the strength or might of the spirit. And that is why every believer must invest in eternity. You must invest in reading the word. Or at least listening to people who have invested deeply in the wisdom of the spirit. In the wisdom of the spirit. So the wisdom of God, divine wisdom is key. The second issue, because of that wisdom, because of that knowledge, okay, because of that revelation that, you, that continues to, to come in your life, you start to realize that as the strength comes, as Daniel says, that they that know their God uh, shall, shall be strong. They shall be strong. There's a strength. As that strength of knowing God comes. God leads you into a certain rest. A certain rest of the spirit. A certain rest and confidence of the spirit. But a confidence that comes from rest. Not a confidence without rest. And that is why the main emphasis is the rest of the spirit and confidence. But that confidence that comes out of that rest. But we cannot speak about that confidence, that rest, without the revelation of the knowledge of his person, and his will, without understanding him in wisdom. So you see, when we get this wisdom in us, this knowledge in us, we become strong. All right? And out of still of that wisdom, out of that revelation of this person, comes rest it comes the confidence of the spirit that's the second point the rest and confidence of the spirit and the bible says in genesis uh, 49 verses 15 verses 14 he speaks of ishakar and he says ishakar is a strong ass coaching down between two burdens and he saw that rest was good and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear and become a servant and to tribute. He, 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 because he's strong, because he carries the strength of the spirit, the Bible says he had to find rest. He saw that rest was good. It is a good thing for a man to walk in the rest of the spirit. Because if that rest is not available, the strength of the spirit cannot be sustained where you're restless. Some people are only strong in the moments that provide for strength. But in the moments that they are tested and tried, they break down in pieces. You learn to rest amidst everything that you're going through. And carry a confidence, confident assurance in God that he will see you through. For the Bible says no temptation that has befallen us save that which is common to man but he says but the lord also is faithful <laughs> hallelujah who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able that means every testation is against your ability never forget that never forget that that every test is against your ability god cannot allow anything to come to you that you're not able to withstand and overcome the Bible says he will not suffer you to be tempted beyond that which you are able. But he will with a temptation, that very temptation, make a way for you to escape that you might be able to bear it. That means there is no burden heavy for you. There is no burden bigger for you not to carry. There is no test or testation that is so big for you not to be able to go through for you not to be able to overcome there is nothing you cannot circumvent there is nothing you cannot overcome there is nothing you cannot defeat god has not let anything to come your way that you are not able to fight if you had bad news from the doctor well you're able you're able to overcome that 
you're able to stand that through. Otherwise, there is no way that thing would come to you. So the tests of life really weigh our abilities with a full persuasion of spirit in God that they come because we are able to deal with them. They come because we are able to overcome them. And that is why we minister rest and confidence to our spirit. Because it's the only way you will transition in the strength of God. Some people believe one day, two years, three, and then one day the person comes for counseling and they make a confession and you're like, oh God. Because they don't understand the power of rest. They don't understand what it means to be confident in the ability that they have in God to deal with whatever. There is nothing that has come to you that is above your ability to conquer. That's not how it works for the believer. That's the only difference between us and the world. That the world gets attacks and they don't know what to do. They cannot deal with them. They don't know how to fix them. But we have given, been given a solemn guarantee by God that nothing shall come your way from the time you transition from darkness to light that you shall not be able to withstand. That you shall not be above. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Isaiah chapter 30, verses 15, he says, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning, that is waiting or coming to God or seeking God, he says, In returning and rest shall you be saved, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What, what does he mean by quietness? That quietness that comes from rest. You know, there are people, when they get challenges, they tell everybody. They, they become broadcasters. Oh, you know, the doctor said that I have this. Oh, you know, the doctor said that I have this. Oh, pity parties. And oh, I know a doctor and I know somebody, you know, they say problem uh, uh, shared is a problem. I don't know where Christians get those things are for the world. We don't share our problems. No, we share about God. We share about God. We talk about God. And that is why I sternly rebuke some of you who are in the habit of narrating your problems everywhere you go. Everywhere you are, you, you need to tell someone, you, oh, you know, I have this problem. Oh, you know, me, I have this problem. Oh, you know, I, you know I've gone through this issue. Oh, you know, I have this challenge. Oh, you, you go telling everybody. You go telling everybody. You go, even people who don't matter. Who cannot help you. Because you don't even know the help that you need. But he said that in that quietness and in that confidence of spirit, he says, shall be your strength. That means we draw and grow and increase in the strength of God as we learn to rest in him and carry a confident assurance that we shall go through this. See, it is easy when everything is okay for you. Some of us, or some of you, have never really been tested. But I've stood before somebody and told me, you have days to die, and they said, uh-uh. And I left that space, and I never shared it with anybody, and believed God. I only gave a testimony of it after I had overcome it. Because every time you narrate these things, you build life, you, 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 you pl you're planting seeds of those realities. Whatever you, can, you don't talk about cannot germinate. Never forget that. Whatever you don't discuss cannot germinate. But some of you, you have ways of narrating. You've become good storytellers of your predicament. You, you know how to tell your sad story. And that's the life you've lived all your life. You just, you just find that you have to. You have to. And how long are you going to do that? Where is God? And so every time you narrate these things, it weakens you. Although you say, oh, a problem half shared is half solved, half solved. You know why they say that? 
because they, they see these issues from an emotional perspective. We see these issues from a spiritual perspective. And because we see things from the spiritual perspective, we either align ourselves to the patterns, the ways of the spirit, or we go the way of the world. But we cannot have both. We cannot have both. You must carry a confidence that God is not only able, but I will overcome this. I will go through this. I will come out of it quickly in the mighty name of Jesus. That's what they call being strong in the spirit. Weak people narrate their issues everywhere they are. They, they need to tell everybody. Everybody must know what happened to them last week and last year. And that is why also I need to emphasize your confession as a, a different point. That's the other point too. Besides the rest and, and, and confidence. I also need to address the issue of your confession. Confession is a very strong pillar. It's a very strong pillar. That should be the fourth. It's a very strong pillar in this. The Bible says somewhere in Joel chapter uh, 3 verses 10. It says, beat your plowshares into swords and your uh, pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say. Oh, when you're weak, what do you say? He, 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 these guys are in trouble, but he's telling them, look, prepare yourselves and align yourselves as men going to war. And if you carry any weakness in your spirit, he's saying, confess strength. Let's just say you feel pain in your body. How often do you narrate or muse or think over this, this pain? Some people are so conscious and consciously thinking about their problems that they, they, they fight. Sometimes some of you, you don't confess with your mouth, but you confess with your heart. Ah, is that even possible? Because the Bible says confession is with the mouth. But the Bible says also in certain spaces that you, to, some people say in their heart. You can have confessions in the, in the heart. So the Bible says do not say in your heart. And Jesus had what they said in their heart. And, re and, and he, he responds to them and says, why do you say? They didn't say with their mouths, but they were saying certain things with their heart. Some of you said certain things with your heart. You don't say it with your mouth, but you say it with your heart. You understand? Otherwise, how would a, how would a dumb person, somebody who can't speak, receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Do you mean that people who are dumb are not born again? They're not dumb, dumb uh, people who are born again? There are people who are born again, but they're dumb, but they can't speak. So how is that confession made? It's made with their heart. So the heart meditates, believes, but also your confession begins from the heart. It begins from the heart. So he tells you, look, when, when your heart starts to go weary in a bad report, in a bad situation, in whatever you're going to, you, you, you learn to speak to your heart and speak with your mouth if you can. In fact, you must if you can. And find yourself confessing strength where weakness was you realize that the spirit of strength and might in you will gain more traction, will gain more tenacity, more stability, more grace. You learn to speak. You learn, you, yes, thoughts can go through, oh, you know, now where am I going to get rent? Then you think for two hours, do you know what you're doing to yourself? Your heart is speaking. You're saying things in your heart. But every time you give yourself to these words, you are killing yourself. You're murdering yourself. You are defiling your spirit. You're breaching your spirit. And as you breach your spirit, when tests come and you have to stand in the space of faith, you cannot believe, you cannot stand time. You will fall in tatters. Why? Because you do not know how to guard and keep your soul, your spirit, your heart. For out of it, the Bible says, are the issues of life. More strength is given when you learn it. And you stir yourself in the joy of the spirit. As you confess 
you stir yourself you to joy because of the rested confidence in him by reason of the wisdom and revelation that you have in him you stir yourself in a certain joy he says for the joy of the lord is my strength but we're not talking about a joy that is contrary to confession that is contrary to rest that is contrary to confidence and faith in god we're talking about this joy that comes as a reason of your speech as a reason of your rest as a reason of your confidence in him because of the revelation that you have in him the knowledge that you have in him so you find yourself confessing and as you're confessing you stir yourself into the joy of the lord you stir yourself to that joy and as as you oh i thank you oh god because i'm healthy oh i thank you you find yourself laughing hallelujah hallelujah glory to god you celebrate it you find a certain joy coming not because you can feel the change in your body not because you've seen the change in your family yet not because you've seen the change in your house yet not because you've seen the change in your finances yet but because this is how you do it this is how you do it you put joy in your heart you put joy and confess right you say i'm strong i am i'm healthy i am wise I am great. I'm a solution giver. I see the strength of God working in me. I'm an overcomer. I change things. I, I change situations. I change projections. I, I know how to speak into my future. My prospects can be aligned. Things are changing for me. I come out of this. And as you continue doing that, this, the joy just starts. You know what I mean? You, it just starts coming. It starts coming. It starts coming. And all of these things are foundations for the spirit of might or strength in your life. Because as it lengthens your days, it is also the preserving factor of every other aspect, your life, your ministry. Certain ministries are dying in this period. And I was sharing with the minister recently, I told him, and I have a sermon on that soon. That if your voice is not relevant in the time when it's most needed ask yourself the question will it be relevant in the time when we go through or out of this so in this period you are either relevant with voice or if we are without voice then carry the wisdom to prepare yourself for relevance because if we come out of this season without a certain aligning in the spirit. I spoke this thing two years ago, one year ago. I kept mentioning in someone's eyes, warning people there's a shaking coming. There's something coming. And those who are spiritual remember. I kept saying there's something coming. There's a shaking coming. We are in that shaking. And certain people are going to sink in this shaking. And others are going to come out stronger than they enter this shaking. And as for you and I, I have decreed and believed God that by the time we come out of COVID season, you're going to have a certain strength in you that no words or language would ever be able to be defined, to define. In fact, you will feel it that there has been a grace given you to be stronger for this war, this journey, this course that we must go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible says in Psalms 8, verses 2 he says out of the mouths of babes and unwind infants you have established strength because of your force that you might silence the enemy and the avenger that he might silence the enemy and the avenger the things that silence the devil he says out of babes out of infants that are nursing the bible says he has established strength from their mouths he says, even the babe, even somebody who just got born again yesterday, if they learn the right confession, they can change anything. They can deal with whatever attacks them. Instead of undergoing delivering services for two years, fire, fire, go, die, fire. No, some, some people are learning, some are learning, some are getting it. That is why when we get people born again, some of the fundamentals of the Christian faith, one, the revelation of love. We teach them John. First John and all those letters. Then 
we teach them about things like the life of God. What does it mean to have a new life in you? We teach them, what does it mean to have the right confession? Because God has given the guarantee even to the babe and the unwind infant that strength can be established from their mouths if they just know how to, to control this ruder, how to control their tongue, how to handle their communication, how to know what to say, when to say, and how to say it. Because remember, life and death are in the power of the tongue. They're in the power of the tongue. And these are things we will repeat until the day you die or leave the earth. Because every day, every day, it is becoming clearer and clearer that Satan has heard us on this issue of confession. Without even knowing, we find ourselves saying things we're not supposed to say. Hallelujah. And lastly, no man increases in strength or learns to walk in the strength of the Spirit when that man has not cultivated a life of prayer and waiting on God. You must learn how to pray. It's more than just confession. It's more than just, oh yes, rest. All of that is good. The wisdom is good. But these things are not complete when you don't have a disciplined life of prayer. I'm not just talking about life of prayer. No, some people are, re are reactional in their life of prayer. I'm talking about a disciplined life of prayer. I pray one time I have time to teach it. To just teach about the disciplining of the self to prayer. The spirit of prayer. How the spirit of prayer works in our lives because some many people don't know how to pray <laughs> many people don't know how to pray i thank god at least that in my earlier years of preparation if there's something i learned i learned to pray i learned to pray and i learned to pray to the god in secret let me emphasize that i don't pray for people to know that I pray. I don't seek to present myself as a praying man. But I have all the results of a man who prays. Because the God who sees you in secret will reward you openly. Again, I'm saying that because I've seen men who know how to sweat out their lungs. And by the time they're done praying, their shirts are wet from head to toe, but they are ministering from without, not within. They are not in the secret place. Their prayer is worth nothing because it's gone with its doing. It's of the flesh so men would see and admire their spaces of worship. But when you look at their lives closely, they don't have the results of prayer. They don't have the graces that follow the life of prayer. And so there's a huge confusion in the body of Christ between people who, who pray and people who don't pray. You know, it's like uh, back in the day when we were growing up, you, you go visit a pastor and many of the pastors we used to visit, and no offense and not that all who did this were actually it, but it was my uh, re re realization once that many of the guys you'd visit, you'd find a Bible open on their table. So you come in for counseling and you find the Bible open on their table. Okay? And they're, they're giving the impression <laughs> that, you know, when you're not in, I am reading. <laughs> but over the years, I had these fellows teaching. And mm -mm, they were not reading the word. <laughs> they were not reading the word. I realize the devotional every day. I have close to 4,000 sermons recorded in the past six or seven years of my life now. Recorded. That means there are some which are not even recorded. Alright? And I preach every week. But you might have never found me once <laughs> reading the Bible. Does that mean that I don't read the Bible? I read the word. 
But you see, I don't read it for people. I don't read it for people to see that I read the Bible. No. I study for me. And those spaces for me are so sacred that they don't desire any attention of man. The places of your congregation with God, your communion with God should be so secret and personal. It is the only way you can hear God in a certain depth because solitude is one of the greatest liberties that you can ever have of spirit. Some people judge the liberties of the spirit only without as of the demonstrations of the spirit or the things that come for our ministration. But really those liberties do not begin in what we demonstrate. No. The demonstration is in the realm of the reward. The vindication of the spirit. The justification of the man of God. The confirmation of the affirmed message. But in the realm, that liberty begins from the realm of our solitude, our oneness with God in communion. And every believer must know how to separate themselves. But I'll teach about that soon. To help you understand what it means to have a disciplined life. Because part of that discipline is consecration. And part of that consecration is a separation. So as a couple, yes, you'll pray with your wife or your husband. And I do. But I must have my moments that cannot be interrupted, intercepted because he called me and I owe him that accountability. So they would open Bibles and your Bibles are open, but you look at them and there's not so much about... They teach... But they're the guys who teach one line in the whole Bible. But the Bibles are always open. Because we've learned the art of playing church. You know, acting, worship. And we, we've learned that art for quite a long time now. We know how to, to get our way around these things. But that should not be so. Because you can fool anybody, but not God. So a believer must learn the space of waiting to know how to just wait on God. You remember the scripture I read when he said when you're restored? Earlier, when I was talking about the spaces of when you're restored, and then you shall, you know, have rest and all these things. If, if you, if you, probably, let me, let me read it back again for you. Uh, I think it was uh, in uh, Isaiah 30, right? In returning. Read it for me in the Amplified. The Amplified says, For that said the Lord God, the Holy One, in returning to me, in returning to me, in returning to me, you see, in returning to me, you're not just returning to, from one place to another, no, the Amplified says you're returning to me, God wants a certain oneness with you, he wants a certain if, if, if you feel that you're disconnected to the person of the Holy Spirit, your, your spaces of, of, of worship, your spaces of communion are dead. He's saying reconcile those spaces because they, 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 they are defining and are seeking a certain definition in your strength and the increase of your strength. So we learn to wait on God and, 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 and I'll read for us a scripture in Psalms 27. The verses 14, it says, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. And it says, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. He shall strengthen your heart. And the psalmist repeats it again, says, wait, I say, on the Lord. It has come twice in the same verse. What do I mean by waiting on the Lord? Waiting on the Lord is not just a passive sitting there and then you say, okay, God, I'm waiting on you. Come. No. Waiting on the Lord means sitting in his presence, recognizing that space with him and allowing to just hear from him. And relate with him. And 
commune with him and indulge with him to be one with him so it's, it's not just the rest of your body no it's as you're waiting on him in fact the literal definition of waiting on the lord is for the man to be before god and allow god to be before him that that god can only lead and the man follow after that's waiting on god to to let to just allow him be before you the same says for the lord was always before me to just let god go before you and that you learn to yield and follow after his spirit to yield entirely to his person there's a process there although the the flesh could be rested but there is a lot of activity of your spirit as you lean in as you lean in some of you you have bad news or a bad report and then you just oh father we cancel and then you move on no separate yourself lock yourself up and say god i'm here what am i missing what is it that i need to know and understand in this you i know you need my attention i am attending right now and i'm present what are you telling me and as true as god is it could be one hour it could be 30 minutes it could be one week it could be one day but you'll hear him you'll hear him and when you hear him you appropriate what they call the law of beginnings the law of beginnings it's the principle of course from Genesis when we go to Genesis in the beginning you know the earth was without form and void and the spirit of the Lord was hovering so he can hover and be present and the Bible says and the Lord said let there be light and the creative force that began everything we see in the physical realm started evolving and God appears to us as a speaking voice with creative power the beginning of all things comes when the word comes when the word is sent he sent a word to Jacob the Bible says and lit the whole of Israel some of you the things you're going through all you need is just one word power and that's the beginning of reversing every cycle that has frustrated your life so I call it the law of beginnings. And the law of beginnings comes with Rema. Comes with Rema. Comes with the appearance and manifestation, the revelation of Rema. And how the man responds. And I wish I had a teaching on that. And how a man responds. Take it how you hear, what you hear. And how a man responds to that Rema is the beginning of either the rebuilding, the creation, or the reversing of the things that must be reversed. But you must learn to wait on God in confident assurance in the rest of the spirit in the wisdom of god in the right confession of your life when you learn these things when you relate with these things fully you will see that you will be a person strong strengthened with might in your spirit your spirit will be so strong that even with the worst news possible you will live through smile through laugh through and overcome in the mighty name of jesus christ now i want to pray with you i want to pray with you as i was speaking i felt in my spirit strength was coming strength was coming the strength of God as the seed was being planted or watered 
in your souls, in your hearts. And I feel that tonight God is establishing you in a certain glory of strength and might. Because this is part of the pillars of facets of the person of the Holy Spirit that is our strengthener. There is none so big for God. It can be big for you. It can be big for science. It can be big for the world. But there is nothing so big for God. And right now I sense the power of strength that overcomes. The strength that overcomes. Divine strength. Raise your voice right now in your home, in your car. If you have other tongues, if you can speak in other tongues, speak them. If you don't speak in the language you understand. But I want you to yield right now. Lean in. You are all glorious. Receive the strength of God. You are all glorious. My heart leans in my soul must sing. You were all glorious. Shadow levels. You were all glorious. You That you are strengthened with might in your inner man. That there is nothing you cannot defeat or overcome. That you are guarded and underguarded. That you are cradled and protected. That you are walled in and hedged in. That you abide under the shadow of his mighty wings. That you are kept and preserved by the power of God unto salvation. That the joy of the Lord is yours. That the waiting on God is yours. That the wisdom of the Spirit, the knowledge is yours. That the rest and confidence of God is yours. And that whatever you're going through right now, you overcome. Now. And whatever comes, you will have the power and strength for it. That your confession is ordained for good. That your lips are anointed for divine purpose. That your mind is filled with only the things that touch God. Tonight you receive the strength of God. You receive the strength of the Spirit in the mighty name of jesus if you're sick in your body you're healed your relationships are restored your children are well your life is well god is going to vindicate you somebody was falsely accused and you're listening in in fact as was speaking you were weeping because of the words that have been spoken about you but god says that all is well with you. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. If you've never given your life to Christ, I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You repeat these words after me and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you died and was raised for my glory. I am born again. Amen. If you've made that prayer, you're born again. You can reach me on fanero.org slash salvation. I want to hear your name, your testimony, whatever God has done in your life. And those of you who have been healed as well, you can go on fanero.org slash testimonies or you can reach us on plus 256-200-99405. That is flashed on the screens for you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being with us today. I hope to hear or see you uh, on uh, Thursday. May the Lord bless you. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at finero.org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Finero, make manners.